Hello viewers, in this video we will design and program a digital clock using a 8085 microprocessor. I am Uchul Gautam from 3rd year integrated MSc Physics, IIT Roorkee. Let's get started. First of all we ask a few questions. What is the purpose of our design? What features it must have? Does it provide actual time for location or not? So. Its purpose is to display time on 7 segment displays. Its, its main feature should be it should be programmable. And it is not since it is not connected to the internet, it cannot provide actual geographical time. It only calculates time on the basis of what we have given the data as input. So let's take our first step and bring up all our requirements in first iteration we have few questions first question how many variables do we require so one each for second minute and hour and another one variable for delay counter we'll further see what will be the purpose of this delay variable so now we allocate the variables. How do we allocate our variables to different registers on board? So now the registers in 8085. We use C as our second variable, B as our minute variable, register D as delay variable and H as our variable. So basically E and L are unused here. Right now, since we have four variables, we cannot use 16 bit mode. Okay, with the variables decided and located, now we move on to how many loops do we need to update those variables. So, one loop for time delay counter and one each for other variables. So, basically. 4 loops in all. How do we output our results? Since each variable second minute hour are 2 digit numbers ranging from 00 to 59 in decimal, they require 2 7 segment displays each. Hence a total of 6 displays are required. Let us now put all the process in a flowchart. First iteration. We start with initializing H variable. The hour variable which is the most dependent variable we can set h from 00, 00 h to 18 h and then display it on ports 1 and 2 then initialize b the second most dependent variable the minute variable this can be set from 00, 00 h to 3 p h display it on ports 3 and 4 now initialize register c register C and display it on ports 5 and 6. Finally, initialize the delay variable. The purpose of which will be to provide a gap of 1 second between two consecutive updates of register C. The arrows indicates that it completes a loop here. On the right hand side, a table corresponding to T states, number of T states used. So, initializing requires 7 T states and displaying uh, a variable requires 14 D states. Moving on, we have for the down counting of the delay variable, we decrement the delay variable by 1 and then check whether it is 0 or not. If it is not, then again we will decrement it by 1 and then we will update the register. If it is 0, then we will increment the C register by 1. That means we have counted one second. Similarly, we'll check for C whether it is equal to 60 in decimal. If it is not, then we'll update, we'll decrement again register C. And if it is equal to 60, then we have counted one minute so far. Hence, we'll update register B. In this way, we completed loop 2 and loop 3 will be completed upon checking whether 
this uh, p variable is 60 or not if it is 60 then we'll update register h and similarly we'll keep on going when this h variable is equal to 24 that means we have counted one whole day then we have to reset our clock to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If it is not, then we will again go to the initial, initialize the loop. And if it is, it has completed 24 hours, then we will reset the loop. Let us now calculate the initial count of the delay counter. Here the loop takes 14 T states. And 4 T states for decreasing the register D, while 10 T states for checking whether it is 0 or not. And going back to decreasing the register D with a frequency of 2 megahertz the maximum time delay that we obtain here is 1.785 milliseconds which is orders smaller than a second while we require a delay of 1 second so we need to redesign our delay circuit moving on to second iteration in the second iteration we take another delay variable in nested loop with the previous one because of the nature of the nested loop the time delay gets multiplied by a factor so we declare register e as our second delay variable updated quantities uh, we have one extra loop for prolonged delay flow chart of second iteration looks like this the updated portion is marked with the red boundary here uh, we are using delay variable 2 of register E, we have initialized it to FFH for maximum delay. We are decreasing it by 1 and then checking whether it is 0 or not. If it is not, then we are again going to decrease the daytime register E. It is design of a simple counter loop. Okay. Time delay calculation for second iteration of loop 1 and 2, the delay loops, nested delay loop. So the time delay for loop 1 is 1.785 milliseconds and the nested loop delay comes out to be 457 milliseconds. This is also not enough for us. So we need to redesign our delay circuit again. Third iteration, the decrementing function takes 4 D states. If we add one incrementing and another decrementing function, the delay will take 12 T states. Z minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 is equivalent to Z minus 1. Z minus 1 means what we require as decreasing the data by 1 while it uh, it uses two uh, more functions which will provide another 8 T states in the innermost loop. So we get here 12 T states in the innermost loop. Flow chart will look like this. While time delay comes out to be 2.805 milliseconds for the first loop, and the second loop delay comes out to be 717 milliseconds. Though this is not enough, but we have increased, we have got a factor multiplication in our delay. We again redesign our circuit with method 2 we use another nested loop inside the first loop we call it loop 0 the third variable we use register L as our third delay variable the flow chart looks like this the third <coughs> variable is in loop 0 this gets updated whenever it is not zero. Okay, so the time delay here comes out to be for the innermost loop it is 1.785 milliseconds. First loop it comes out to be 457 milliseconds. The second loop it gets to 116 seconds, which is far more than our requirement 
so we need to initialize to a lower value these three loops so we estimate the values of initial values of register d e and l our requirement is that time delay of loop 2 plus the outer time delay of loop 2 should be equal to 1 second to minimize the error the outermost loop of delay counter must be minimized if it doesn't fit our requirement then we must decrease the value of the penalty mid counter by hit and trial we have got these three values l is equal to 254 in decimals e register e should be initialized to 140 in decimals while register d should be initialized to 4 in decimals so our time delay is calculated to be 1.0007735 seconds which is very very close to our requirement finally the updated loop wise delay looks like this in loop 0 it takes 1.778 milliseconds with initialization of variable l as 254 the loop 1 time delay comes out to be 250.18 milliseconds with initialization of variable e as 140 while for loop 2 it comes out to be 1.000756 seconds for third loop it comes out to be 60.04632 seconds since we have <coughs> 60 seconds in one minute we need we have initialized uh, we get the maximum value of the third loop as 60 for loop 4 we again use 60 and for whole day we initialize the the maximum value of our variable is should be 24 okay here we see that for every 3600 second that is for every hour our time delay gets to 3602.78016 seconds that is there is a there is an error of 2 seconds 2.7 seconds right it may get magnified in a time of a day or so so we need to counter this error so what we can do for this error estimation the error comes out to be relative error comes out to be 0.07 percent though this is not much but we can also minimize this error by by decreasing the variable c by 2 every hour okay so this will again reduce the error fine now our clock is ready with minimal error and it's time to look at how one can set up the clock to set up the clock we initialize variable h to the hour of the day suppose now the time is 7 pm 30 minutes and 45 seconds so the hour variable should be 12 plus 7 since it is pm it should be 19 our variable should be 19 while the minute variable b it should be 30 in decimals and the register c it should be 45 okay hence we have initialized our clock now it is ready to go now let us look at its program in 8085 microprocessor so the label mnemonics memory address hex code of the mnemonic and number of t states required to perform this function so first we label the initialization of variable h as start in memory address 01 we enter hex code 26 and in 02 memory address we enter 00 here 26 represents here 26 represents the hex code of mvi move immediate value uh, function and 00 represents the data that needs to be moved to register h 
it requires 70 state next we display it and hence we label it as display output number is the mnemonic in register in address 3 we enter d3 in 401 and in 502 d3 represents output port hex code while 0102 represent the location of port overall it requires 14 d states similarly move immediate to register b 00h this requires 70 states again output it on port 03 and 04 similarly move immediately to c 00h Similar, similarly move immediately to d 04h 04 is the updated value of delay register d that we calculated in the previous section finally moving on loop 2 ends here so we have labeled it loop 2 and mnemonic is move immediately to e h c h we have initialized the register e with h c h okay its hex code looks like this 1 e for move immediately to e and h c for the data that needs to be moved to e okay. loop 1 ends here so we have labeled it as loop 1 loop 0 ends here dcr dcr is the decrement function decrementing register l its hex code is 2d simply 2d it requires 4 t states now when register d when register l is not 0 it should jump to loop 0 so the mnemonic is j and z jump when not 0 to loop 0 memory address hex code its hex code c2 represents jump when not 0 and 16xx is in LIFO mode last input first output xx16 this represents the memory address of loop 0 okay so when it is not 0 it will move to xx16 memory address fine this function requires 10 d states again okay, decrementing variable e jump when not 0 to loop 1 then decrementing variable d jump when not 0 to loop 2 loop 2 that we have <coughs> labeled it in the previous slide then increment c then again check whether it is 0 or not and jump to loop 3 increment b Now move A to B. What represent what it means here? Okay. So the data in B should be moved to A. Its hex code is 78 and it equals 46. Why do we need to move uh, data in B to A? Because we need to compare it with some other value than 0 okay so we are comparing immediately here with some data so we are using cpi function here so cpi its hex code is fe comma 3b here fe represents cpi function and 3b represents 3b should be 3c here my mistake 3c it represents the data which with which it needs to be compared and it requires 70 states then in then check whether it is zero or not the accumulator portion check whether it is zero or not and then go back to loop four okay so the hex code looks like this then similarly increment h and move h to a then compare it with 24 in decimal or 18 in hexadecimal and check whether it is 0 or not if it is 0 then again go back to start and follow the same process because this is another day okay thanks for giving your time